I teach online because it's extremely rewarding. Uh, it's very satisfying for somebody who's devoted, I've devoted my life to watching students improve their chances for success. There are opportunities for engagement that are not available in the face-to-face -face situation. Uh, there are a lot of obstacles to interactivity in the classroom. Uh, students are shy, uh, students are having English as a second language or they have a learning disability which prevents them really from actively participating in an interaction with other people in a face-to-face -face situation. Those students have a chance to, to organize their thoughts and create uh, interactivity uh, using their own, uh, at their own pace without the pressure of the, of the immediacy. I advocate the use of threaded discussion forums for in engagement with other uh, course participants, both the instructor as well as the other student learners. It provides me with the, with the opportunity to have students discuss a topic over an extended period of time. Uh, one of the oldest learning principles is that time on task equals learning. And so when you have a classroom discussion that lasts 50 minutes, that's limited time with a limited number of participants. It's a challenge for the facilitator of that environment to limit the participation of some and encourage the participation of others. Online, that problem is equalized because everybody has a chance to participate. It's a two-week time period where you log on and participate really at times when the learner chooses to. It's convenient for them that when they're at in the mood to do that and so you're not really fighting you know I have to be there at nine o'clock and I don't really want to be and so forth. Uh, it makes it a more conducive general learning environment because the students are logging in when it's convenient for them and they want to participate. I really couldn't do it in the classroom. In the classroom I was an actor. I would be standing on the desk and demonstrating gravity to them and thinking that I was very effective. Little did I know that half the time they weren't paying any attention to me whatsoever. Uh, I had trouble stepping out of, the, out of the limelight. Online, that was a natural for me to find the inner strength to shut up and let them learn. And in the threaded discussion, uh, as long as it has been developed according to a, uh, a set of best practices, uh, students will generally find that it's the, that's, that's the learning activity through which they acquire most of their information. It allows them to construct new information based upon the foundation of the knowledge that they already have so that they can achieve an assimilation or an accommodation of the new knowledge, make it meaningful, apply it to their own uh, set of experiences. And uh, we found that the real secret to student learning is paying attention and focused attention to the content and finding meaning in the content. And that really requires uh, a sense of ownership and uh, autonomy and, and personal responsibility with the learning process itself. You give them the opportunity to do that by providing them uh, options, for example, of what topics they choose to discuss. Uh, in a lot of our courses, we have students ask the discussion questions rather than respond to the instructor's discussion questions. When it comes time to doing uh, research on an issue, uh, rather than providing them with a list of options or, or assigning them a topic, ask them to find the topic that interests them the most and that they would most like to teach to the other students and let them choose that topic and explore that in depth and then report on that. The pedagogical philosophy that the faculty member chooses to adopt Adopt, makes a, a big impact on how the course works. Uh, the philosophy that I myself subscribe to and that I advocate at my college is one in which the students do a lot of the decision making uh, for themselves on the learning path towards the objectives of the course. So uh, technically that's called hudagogy, which is a, a philosophy of letting the learner uh, direct her or his own learning path. And so to that extent, I try to help faculty come up with uh, activities in the course in which students have a lot of choice so that they can select what topics to emphasize uh, and what particular issues to pursue in more depth than others uh, without losing the overall scope of what the content must be, 
that still allows them to customize and, and it increases their, the students' intrinsic interest in the activities and, and in the content. If you're designing a course in such a fashion that the learners are taking charge of the teaching role, the design is the most important feature. The design is the way that you add your teaching presence to the learning environment. So you, if you design a course where the learning activities are effective and where the opportunities for students to take charge and direct their own learning path uh, are working and uh, are effective, then you have designed a course in which there will be progress toward learning of, uh, the student learning outcomes will be achieved. Uh, teaching itself is a, uh, a sending out of information. Learning is the receiving of that information. The teacher doesn't have a lot of control over learning. The learners have control over the learning. And so it's the teacher's job to handle the motivation, the attention, the, cog the cognitive aspects of it, but it's the learner's responsibility to do the work. So if you can arrange the course so that it's the learners that are doing the work, you're probably going to have a successful course. It really becomes possible to, for, the, for the instructor to turn over a lot of the responsibility to the students themselves. Uh, they become more responsible for their own learning. They are more willing and able to determine their own learning path because they're not in this situation where everybody's progressing through a class 50 minute time period at the same pace. Uh, anytime there's an opportunity for the instructor to step back and, and watch individuals choose their own pace, their own uh, tempo, the content that they are em emphasizing is a choice that they make, uh, just giving them this additional responsibility uh, at the end of the course, one of the most common comments I get when I ask for them to review the course and to evaluate their learning experience was that they really appreciated the fact that the course was customized by them for, for themselves. And that even though they had to read chapters in a textbook and take exams on the chapter in the textbook, those topics which they selected were those that they were the most interested in, that were the most meaningful for them, that they found the most value in. Technohedagogy is the art and science of using technology to assist learners in directing their own learning experience. And I think it's important as a philosophy because technology can be a, a huge asset or it can be a huge waste of time. One example of technology would be a learning management system. The internet gives us the opportunity to have uh, content, uh, interactivity, assessment, blogging, wikis, etc. Throwing all of these components into a student's learning program doesn't make it a good course. Throwing multimedia at a student doesn't make it a good course. If there's no pedagogical uh, application or purpose for the technology, then it's probably just wasting bandwidth and time. So the instructional designer and the instructor have to reach an agreement that you apply technology only when it's appropriate. Now, technohutagogy uh, rears its presence when you take a multimedia experience and find ways for the student to pay attention to it, to then engage with the content and exchange what they got from it and reflect upon how it impacts them. I think one of the, one of the ways that technohutagogy has directed our attention to uh, the learner is we can then question the learner on what is it that you have benefited from that you think might change the way you think about this or the way you will behave in the future on this thing. So to reflect upon the impact of the learning experience, sort of it's like a metacognition idea, uh, allows them to find personal relevance and meaningfulness in the learning. That, that's motivational and that's attention getting. And uh, students 
uh, appreciate the fact that what they're learning does have relevance to their, to their future. When the glimmer of light explodes in their eyes that I, I don't need this guy to teach me something because I know how to go out and learn it on my own and find it and discuss it and, and benefit from what I can do, uh, that gives them a sense of autonomy, self-efficacy, efficacy, and uh, it's really rewarding for me for them to get that sense of independence. I mean, I, I think I am most helpful to students when they finally realize I'm not teaching them anything. They're teaching themselves something. A common mistake that first-time online instructors make is that they try to do exactly the same thing in, in the online environment that they are doing in the classroom. I encourage faculty to not lecture. If they have documents they want students to read, present those documents, but then have the students discuss the documents. Because reading without discussing does not encourage attention to the, to the reading content. Uh, a mistake that a lot of faculty make, in my opinion, is that they provide a study guide with reading content. The study guide is, almost becomes uh, a set of things to look for in the reading rather than to read it for the, under, for the understanding that's there. So if I'm trying to answer specific questions, the study guide says I need to know this, so I, look, I scan around until I find the answer and then I write that answer down. You're not really reading with understanding. Uh, a skill that a lot of students don't have when they start a course is they don't have good reading comprehension skills. They don't pay attention. Their mind wanders while they're reading and it's just wasting their time to continue reading. So you keep the reading assignments very short and you make them motivated to read for attention because then they have to discuss. And one of the better ways to get that attention focus is to have them ask questions themselves of what they've just read. Okay, what is it that you didn't understand? What would you like to know more about? Okay, what was not included in the reading that you think should have been, the, that kind of thing. You want them to analyze and critique and uh, become uh, attentive, uh, curious, critically thinking consumers of information. So you keep the reading short, you focus their attention on the content by asking them then to discuss it. And uh, that would be my very first suggestion to a new faculty member is don't videotape yourself and le lecturing to your class. Put your students in charge of reading and then discussing. My philosophy is that faculty need to be extremely familiar with the way the course works and the way the course design works and what the pedagogy underlying the course design is uh, in addition to being their own content masters. So I don't really like for faculty to use canned content or uh, publisher provided content. I prefer them to pick and choose their own content and develop the learning activities to engage students in that content themselves. One of the, uh, one of the secrets to uh, creating an effective attention retaining discussion is to eliminate the sense that it's a waste of time or to eliminate the belief that it's just uh, talking or chatting rather than actually discourse for the purpose of teaching and learning. Uh, we talk a lot in, in the instructional design profession of creating teaching presence in a course. And it's my belief that it's the learners that can actually take responsibility for creating that teaching presence. So one of the best practices that I insist upon is that whenever a student submits a post to a discussion forum, that post has to teach something. And to introduce that post, I want students to create a little abstract of the, of the point that they're trying to teach and present that abstract as an advanced organizer in the form of the subject or the post title. And so getting students to adopt that practice where they have to think about what it is their main point is and summarize that into a single complete sentence, that gives them uh, the, the necessity really of solidifying and the salient point of their post, but it also provides this advanced organizational learning device for the learners, for the other students in the class, so that they know in advance, before reading the message, what they are supposed to extract in terms of meaning from that message. That's one example of a best practice that 
adds a, a layer of pedagogical effectiveness to a discussion forum that otherwise would be lost because of students' practice to just reply or you know, re your post. Uh, that doesn't really convey any advanced information for the learners. I've heard more than once that uh, faculty feel a responsibility to be active participants in the discussion threads. And my sense of, of best practice for them would be to focus their attention to providing feedback to the students who are facilitating the discussion rather than to, for them to take the responsibility to facilitate the discussion themselves. So a best practice for a faculty member would be to monitor the interaction and then provide feedback to the discussion leaders on how to get the conversation back on track or how to uh, present information that corrects a, some misinformation that might have been presented, uh, how to probe for additional information from the participants and so forth. So if the students are asking the questions and then they're taking responsibility for teaching that topic and leading that discussion, the instructor's role then becomes one of making sure they do a good job and that the conversations that they are facilitating are providing accurate information about the content that's being discussed. My experience with literally thousands of faculty members over the last 15 years is that if they try it, they'll probably like it. So if when they tell me, well, my students can't do that, my response is you don't really know until you've given them the opportunity. Now, the majority of students that I personally teach are freshmen or sophomore students at a community college. And the community college accepts any students who is a high school graduate or has a GED. And those students don't come to our campus as mature adult learners. They come to our campus with the perception that the teacher does most of the work and that they will get by simply by showing up and attending class. So, if my success with those students and with that subset of students is very rewarding and successful, then I'm pretty sure that the teacher that I'm trying to get to try this is not uh, dealing with a population that's more challenging. And, and once they try it, and I, I, I tried to help them create a set of discussion rules and, pro and procedures that almost guarantee a lot of interactivity and a lot of participation and encourage them to stand back and watch it evolve, then they become converted because they are rewarded when their students are talking about their discipline, contributing teaching presence to a conversation that the professor never thought that they would be able to provide.